Welcome back to the channel. It's time to talk about the very worst comic books of the week that you can read. And this week, I'm decided to torture Doc with Black Panther number 10. Last time we did review issue number nine, it was so bad, we decided to visit again. John Ridley writing, Herman Peralta on art. The art is fine. The writing is atrocious. How are you doing, Doc? I'm all right, but I still don't even give the, the art on this a pass. I've seen Herman Peralta's other art, and it is significantly better than this. I think we can both agree the art is definitely not the worst thing about this. It's the story from John really himself. There's just moments in here that I get what John really is trying to do. He doesn't think of himself as a writer. He thinks of himself as an educator. But I'm supposed to believe that T'Challa, the king of Wakanda, a very well-read, very smart man, has never heard of the Buffalo Soldiers and has no idea of any of their exploits. I mean, I, I feel like it's John Ridley mostly just talking to white people, trying to educate us because he thinks we're a bunch of ignorant rubes that don't know anything about American history, Inclu it, it, you know, if it's black people. T'Challa is a very well-educated person. He's a very smart person. You know, he's not a walking, you know, American history encyclopedia, but the Buffalo Soldiers were kind of important in the Civil War and afterwards. I mean, the idea that he would have no concept of who they were is kind of ridiculous. I agree, but they needed that plot point to be in here to educate the readers, Doc, and let us know that essentially white people are the colonialists in this story, as if we didn't know that already. And guess what? The Buffalo Soldier from the other multiverse is being used just like the Buffalo Soldiers were before. This time they're stealing from another race of people instead of the Indians, but it's the exact same story. That's the analogy being told here. And it's so spot on. It's so boring. Like, what's the point of even writing the book if you're not going to do anything interesting with it? He can't do an allegorical story. He can't do an applicability story. He can't even do a, a M. Night shyamalan and twist of a story version of this. Instead, it's just, look at how they're the same. Nothing about this was well written now that's been a big problem with black panther probably for the last four or five issues started out pretty good and it's absolutely nosedive this is where it pretty much dies and there's so many weird moments in here like i don't even know what he's trying to do with the shuri democratic thing and everyone's just trashing black panther in wakanda and his sister's doing nothing about it she's like yeah, they're trashing you, buddy. Have fun yeah. with that. Yeah, they're 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 having like they they had this one page inter one or two page interlude. What shit on Black Panther Day? Apparently, that's what the actual convention is, not a Democratic convention, because a Democratic convention would be talking about the future of the country, not just shitting on the old leadership. And of course, it has to be a lady that's leading now with the mental illness, haircut, and all that good stuff. Yeah, of course. Just just so that Shuri can justify, honestly, the like previous four panels. That's it. Well, she took her spot anyway. She's supposed to be the lady with the mental illness haircut. The worst part about this story is when we finally get into the end with T'Challa and the Buffalo Soldier going at it, T'Challa explains to him, listen, you're being used like white people used the Buffalo Soldiers here on our planet years ago, you know, obviously like 100, 200 years ago. And he's like, well, it sounds like they were just following orders and free will isn't all that it's cracked up to be. And then he pulls his gun out like he's going to murder him. Black Panther, deciding to use his free will, decides to stay in front of the bullet, get shot, potentially die to teach a lesson, I guess, to this Buffalo Soldier character from the multiverse, which I think is actually another version of T'Challa. And all of a sudden he just realizes what the whole lesson was and he goes on the attack and joins the good guys it made total sense doc he just got regret out of nowhere after he shot the guy he he made the conscious decision to point a gun at him made a conscious decision to pull the trigger and then he regrets it because the guy didn't move out of the way just so that dodging bullets then... is hard doc what was he expecting him to like <laughs> yeah <laughs> exactly flash <laughs> yeah the whole point of him pulling a gun and aiming it and shooting it at a guy is to hit the guy. He's upset that the guy that he was trying to murder let himself get murdered and suddenly his lesson made sense. He's a soldier, man, and that's the enemy. But he didn't really make the moment itself make sense, so therefore it loses all impact that it's supposed to have. He's supposed to have this big change of heart. He's changed his stripes. He's about to be redeemed after trying to kill a man. But it all falls flat because the storytelling is bad. But that's pretty much what this entire comic book issue is. It's just bad storytelling left and right. Really bad analogies. What happened with the colonialists? The concubines of the big guy that has the little guy on his shoulder tell them the little guy's really in charge, so they're going to beat him up. 
and then all of a sudden he's just helpless. They needed permission from the Avengers to take out the the little guy because you know it was an obvious like as i said it was a master uh, blaster situation yeah it was a master blaster or, or um the ventriloquist from batman the animated series you mean this wasn't an original idea doc no not in the slightest bit like none of it made sense because all of a sudden it just required carol to tell the concubines that they could stop the dummy now they suddenly have permission to do it because reasons why they couldn't like do anything about it before never explained you know his motivation for being here never explained i guess shuri showed up with another one of those little bisexual lighting grenades just randomly fixes everything it sucks all of the soldiers and the uh, the monster things in that fixed everything but it didn't suck the the colonialists and the concubines and the fucking elephant in nothing in this comic made any sense there was no even concept of an overarching plot there was no villain motivation the enemy was dispatched by a macguffin yeah it's just a series of plot contrivances not unexpected from a modern writer that doesn't know actually how to write gobble books uh we've seen that from john really the past there's also one doozy here at the end doc they're promoting the next issue of Black Panther, and apparently they're re-soliciting Black Panther number 10. This shows exactly where their editorial department is. All we ask you to do is be able to count to 12, and they can't even do that. <laughs> they didn't exactly nail that one. That was like, issue number 10 twice, huh? All right. Well, we're going to learn the secret history of Wakanda and the Black Panthers, Doc. This is unexplained territory. We've never, ever heard any history about the Black Panthers. Never. None. Nobody else that has ever done any work on Black Panther has ever given us real history of it. Reggie Hudlin didn't. Christopher Priest didn't. Jack Kirby didn't. Nobody. So, yeah, so John really gonna, doing it, you know it's going to be 10 times worse than it could be. Absolutely. If John really's secret history of the DC universe is any indication of what's going to happen, it's definitely going to be worth checking out just for the cringe factor. I can't wait to see how he shits on Captain America and the history of Wakanda because he shit on Superman and the history of the DCU. Doc is exactly right. And if you don't know what we're talking about, the secret history of the DC universe told through the eyes of Black Lightning, I guess, in issue number one, where it basically kind of disparages the character, makes him seem like a bit of a goofball, all in an attempt to destroy Superman and his legacy. You definitely need to check out this video. I made this one specifically for you. John Ridley is an absolute hack, and he should never be retconning any history ever for any publisher. You need to see this one. If you don't see it there, there's also a link in the video description.